Hi, everyone. Tonight, we have a very, very special show on two books that myself and my partner, Judith Salovitz, uh, authored with our guest tonight, Sam Sorowitz from the famous Poster Tati movie uh, gallery in New York at 239 Center Street. I want to spell it out. C-E-N-T-R-E Street in New York. They have the most vast collection of uh, movie posters. And uh, I'll start off by saying the story of the show starts when I walked into Judith's office one day and said, Judith, we got to do a book on movie posters. And she said immediately, indie movies. That's how it started. And so we combined with, I found Sam Sorowitz in New York, who had a major collection which you should all see, by the way. And uh, that's how our first book started on the independent movie poster book with Abrams Books in 2004, uh, 205 color images in the book. And we're, we're going to talk about the second book after that, which is called The Art of the Modern Movie Poster Book, uh, Postwar to Modern. And that was in 2008 with Chronicle Books. And that is a vast book of 1,500 movie posters. The book is filled with incredible uh, sections. So let's start by introducing Sam Sorowitz. And uh, Sam, tell us about, first of all, tell us about the, the, the collectors, uh, the movie poster collection culture. Movie posters uh, are something I started collecting uh, when I was in film school many years ago and worked in film and uh, the culture of it uh, is uh, I think people love movie posters for a couple reasons. One, because a, they love movies and they love everything having to do with movies. And then secondly, and uh, I guess the reason we all got involved together was from the design of movie posters. Hmm. And that's something that um, I've had an education over the 25 plus years that I've been doing uh, post-retati since I started it. And um, uh, just people love love movies. It's, I think, one of the most beloved art forms of the 20th century and now 21st century, of course. And um, uh, collecting a poster is a way to remember the film and remember where they were, what age they were when they first saw that movie. And uh, and they're relatively inexpensive by and large compared to many other uh, types of uh, works on paper and, and um, uh, other types of art that people could collect. I want to add also, which I uh, terribly forgot, is that the text in these both books by David Kerr, who was then with New York Times Film, now with Ma, uh, MoMA, and Judith uh, Salovitz, my partner, designed both the books, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but let's start with the indie book, and that was in 2004, uh, Abrams Books, 209 Images. Uh, the book was divided into different sections, and they were Inception of Indie Film, Indie Auteur, Truth, Doc, and Doc Style, and Music Movies. These were different sections in the book. And... Um, we, uh, we want to profile, we had a section of profiling directors, and one of them was Jim Jarmusch, one of our favorite people in our life. Uh, and uh, why don't you talk about the posters that you had picked, Sam, uh, in Jim's section? We had a bunch of Polish posters in there, Spence, and I'm, I'm just referring to the book right here. Polish posters, which we feature prominently in this book, in, in fact, in both books, Mm -hmm. uh, are very renowned for their modernist uh, take on design. And they're very famous in the graphic design world. Uh, very unusual, very unique. Uh, in fact, the poster behind me uh, is a Polish poster. And um, I think people can see along with the, all the Jarmusch posters that uh, they'll be seeing uh, just how interesting, avant-garde, sometimes surreal and fun the graphics are for Polish posters. If you can get your hands on these books, especially the uh, the International Movie Poster Book, which features a large number of Polish posters, 
you, you can actually see, I mean, it's hard to even put into words how incredible their designs, the Polish designers are in, in depicting the, 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 the visuals of these movie posters. And the interesting point that I wanted to make is sometimes, and many times, the visuals have nothing to do with what the movie is about. It was all about, you know, apparently they had free hand in putting what they wanted to on, on some of these posters. And some of them are like so out of this world, incredible. You would never have thought that that image would go with that movie. So I, I, I would strongly urge if you can get your hand on one of these books, you, you know, you, it's hard to explain. You actually have to visually see it. So let's go into the posters that you had sent, Sam. A uh, beautiful poster that you sent, and go over those posters. Right, all all about my mother, and yeah, um, yeah that. Uh, I mean, Almodovar's posters, I think, capture the elements that his um, films capture. In in just um, it was designed. The poster was designed by Oscar Marine. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, just his uh, all of his uh, films have beautiful posters. And uh, and again, if you've seen an Almodovar film, you know that the stylization and the and the look of the films, the, the art direction and, and mm. just everything about the costumes, the art direction, everything about them is so, um, they're beautiful and they're fanciful and they're stylized and the posters capture that as well. And, the, and this one is one of my favorites. It's an absolute yeah, beautiful Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful poster. Really, I really agree. The next one, Blue Velvet, David Lynch, Italy. So um, that is a pretty um, out there mm. poster. Uh, it's an Italian poster for the great David Lynch uh, film, Blue Velvet. And it shows a woman tied up uh, to a pool table and uh, blood is dripping down from the ball. Um, and it was designed by Ernesto Scotti. Mm -hmm. And um, but the interesting thing about that particular poster is that the um, uh, the image. Is, so if you've ever seen Blue Velvet, I think everybody knows that that it's a very <laughs> strange film, like all David Lynch films. Right. And uh, <laughs> and but you look at that poster, and you're saying, well, why this image? Because it's not in the film. Well, right. as it turns out, the reason that there, it's this image is that that is a scene that was cut out of the film. So wow. I guess Mr. Scotty, when he was designing the poster, was looking at maybe a rough cut of the film oh. and designed his, the poster based on that. That's interesting. Uh, Boogie Nights, German. Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson film. Uh, it's just an absolutely fabulous design. Uh, we don't know the designer of that, as, as is the case with many uh, movie poster designs. Mo most of them outside of a handful. It depends to a degree on the country. And actually, German posters, a lot of times you do know the designers. But in this case, we don't know who designed that poster. But it's a terrific poster for a great, great film. It shows uh, Roller Girl, I believe, was the character's name. Right. And uh, it's all about the porn industry. And it's it's a great movie and a great poster for that. And, and the next one, Polish poster Caravaggio. Uh, uh, we're talking about concept, uh, credible artwork right on the front. Caravaggio. Uh, that's a J Derek Jarman film. Uh, the poster was designed by uh, Walkuski. Uh, his first name is Vaishla Valkuski, I think the W's in Poland are, are pronounced with V's. Um, again, a very, very somewhat disturbing image, which again is not uh, unusual for Polish posters. And, um, uh, but just a dynamic, dynamic image. La Cienega. Kim Maley uh, designed this for an old friend of mine, uh, ran a company, uh, John Vanka ran a company called Cowboy Booking. And Kim... Uh, Maley, who used to teach at SVA in, in New York City, designed both this and the next poster, uh, which is Cure, which yeah, is a Japanese yeah. film by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. And her designs are both, and again, they're very different, again, from going from the, uh, the highly illustrated uh, Boogie Nights and uh, Blue Velvet. 
and the Caravaggio to this uh, just very, very stark photo design and then a sort of photo montage on Cure as well. I think they're both absolutely beautiful posters. The next one's really interesting, Fargo, because it's almost like a dark humor to me. The film, obviously, if you if you know the film um, yeah. and the Coen Brothers, Coen Brothers films are always very tongue in cheek. And yeah. um, uh, so the film is, I mean, the poster is a, is sort of a play on a knit um, rug, uh, which is very famous kind of design for rugs and, and tapestries and things like that. And uh, but it, it's the movie is a, is a again, a, a very dark comedy about a murder. So it, I think the poster captures that lovely. Next one, happiness. Daniel yeah. Klaus is, is a famed uh, cartoonist. Todd Sullins, a uh, New York indie director. Uh, it's an amazing film. Again, he's he's a uh, graphic novelist, uh, um, uh, Klaus is, and this poster is in his sort of comic book style, which is yeah. very, yes. very unique. Happy Together, which is... Um, Hong Kong poster for the Great Wong Kar Wai film about uh, uh, a, a gay love affair in uh, in this uh, I think it's seventies or eighties. An absolutely brilliant film and just a lovely, lovely poster. Uh, next one's beautiful. Leningrad Cowboys Polish poster. Waldemir Sverzy. So Leningrad Cowboys is filmed by the great Finnish director Aki Kurzmaki. Uh, Waldemar Sverzy is one of the most significant Polish designers. He designed some of the greats, including the uh, Midnight Cowboy, which I think we'll be talking about in the next book. His style is just it's very, very uh, representative of Polish poster design. Yeah. Next one. Now, the next one's a series, I think, in the book. Let's get more of the Chet Baker one. William Claxton design. In the book, we have a series of the Let's Get Lost posters, the great Bruce Weber. If, if anybody doesn't know, Bruce Weber is a famed fashion photographer and uh, also did this film about the great uh, uh, tr uh, trumpet player, uh, tragic uh, life of uh, Chet Baker. And uh, he used this photo and, and made it look like it had been aged. It, that's all those wrinkles and so forth are not in the poster, they're just part of the design. And uh, it's a, a beautiful poster for a lovely film. It is. Uh, next one, Akira Kurosawa, Japan. And now that's interesting because it's his artwork, right? On the on the poster, right, Sam? This is all Correct, yeah. yes. So that that is uh, Kurosawa. The, the, uh, if I had to make a list of my favorite directors, Akira uh, Kurosawa is in the top five oh, yeah, or six. Exactly. Yes. I mean, one fantastic movie after another. And um, he would do his own storyboards for his films in crayon. And he also did some of the poster designs for his films. Not many, but a handful of them. And this is one of them. Next one's one of my favorite directors, El Mariachi, Robert Rodriguez. And this movie really got him into the limelight. And then he did Desperado after it. But El Mariachi's in our book, uh, another classic poster. Yeah, well, that's a that's a hilarious poster of of the, uh, uh, the of the the title character El Mariachi, and uh, if you know the film, you know he's a a hired assassin, and he's uh, walking around with his uh, his gun, and um, but it's a very uh, um, uh, again not a serious film at all, very tongue in cheek, yeah. uh, semi semi comedy, and so forth. Uh, my own private Idaho uh, Polish poster. Uh, another uh, very interesting Polish poster. Um, I don't know much about the, the two designers of this poster, but it's a very famous film by Gus Van Zandt, starring Keanu Reeves in River Phoenix. Uh, it's based on Shakespeare, uh, Falstaff's story, and um, it's just a, a beautiful, evocative poster that really has... It's a very, very stylized uh, representation of the film. Really has nothing to do with the film in some regards, but everything to do with the film in others. Pulp Fiction, uh, James uh, Verde Soto, I believe. Uh, Pulp Fiction. Uh, well, Pulp Fiction, of course. Everybody knows Pulp Fiction. And um, 
There are a couple different designs, actually. This one, if you look uh, on the bed uh, beneath uh, Uma Thurman, you'll see a cigarette pack, and they used a pack of Lucky Strikes, and they had to pull the poster because Lucky Strikes company, cigarette company, was going to sue them. So mm. they had to redesign the poster. Huh. And it, it's very, the, the one that was mainly used is very similar, but slightly different. But the poster was made to look like a pulp uh, paperback book. So right. it has the, you know, the price tag, the 10 cent yeah. price tag on there and a uh, very cute design. Uh, Stranger than Paradise, uh, Jim Jarmusch. Uh, yeah, that we don't know who designed that. Uh, I mean, Jim Jarmusch's uh, second film, but is the his first sort of mainstream film that not even mainstream, but the film that made him yeah. uh, his and uh, just a beautiful uh, photo design, uh, very stark, which captures the film. The film is all in black and white and uh, it's a great film, a great poster. Yeah. So the next two posters of what, what I call music movie posters are in our music section and they're probably two of the strongest fan based films. Uh, one is Stop Making Sense. Pablo Ferro was involved in this design, and I know him very well, a great designer, Pablo Ferro. And, uh, Adele Lutz. I'm not familiar with them. I mean, it's, you know uh, Mr. Ferro. Yeah. Uh, it's a great design of an iconic uh, performance by David Byrne, of course, as, as with a big suit on. The film is actually being re-released this fall, and there's a new trailer um, which actually involves that white suit. If anybody hasn't seen it, I would go to r run out and, and try to find that trailer. It's very funny. I have preference to these two because I designed for Talking Heads and designed for the Ramones. Now, the next one is the Ramones. And th this is a very famous movie, doc film, End of the Century, Story of the Ramones, uh, Michael Gramaglia and Jim uh, Fields. It's a great poster for a terrific doc about uh, the Ramones and I mean who, do, who doesn't love the Ramones that's right mm -hmm. and uh, I designed for them at Sire so uh, it has a close uh, to my heart this movie great film Johnny uh, sadly uh, no longer with us but Johnny uh, used to be my customer many many years ago oh wow and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, years ago when I started this business I was doing it out of my apartment and my mom had come up to stay with me. Mm. And I told her, I said, Mom, you're about to get to meet one of the Ramones. And she goes, <laughs> one of who? What? <laughs> you know, the, the other tie-in is that I designed mm -hmm. the end of the century album for the Ramones, which is tied at the same time as the movie. So that's an interesting little bit. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's go on to the second book, The Art of the Modern Movie Poster, Post-War to Modern. Many thousands of posters and 20 countries, 2008 Chronicle Books. And this book was divided. This was interesting. Uh, most movie books that I've ever seen are not, didn't have so many sections that we had that made it a really good book. For instance, comparison posters, um, uh, famous artists of every country, different countries. I mean, we wanted to show. Um just the varied nature of the designs from country to country to country. So yeah. uh, I think we all put our heads together and came up with that as a way to um, break up the chapters uh, to show, to pick out iconic films and then show uh, six, eight, 10 different posters from the same film. So people could see how completely um different dissimilar that the designs were and or sometimes similar but um how each country had their own take on that uh the design for that particular film let's talk about Saul Bass in the United States his posters well Saul Bass is um I think rightly considered probably the most significant graphic designer of the second half of the 20th century mm. and um Saul Bass did, uh, I mean, his movie poster designs that are most famous would be the, uh, Vertigo and Anatomy of a Murder. Probably the most, um, uh, the one that has had the most impact is really the Anatomy of a Murder because so many designers have done riffs on that design mm. 
uh, for other posters and I think for and everything else, which was the 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 man, you know, the 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 body on the on the ground and uh, and broken up in a very graphic way. We show four posters: Vertigo, Anatomy of a Murder, Bonjour, Tristesse, and Saint Joan. Right? Those are the four. Right. Those are four, probably my four favorite of Bass's work. But uh, Bass, uh, I mean, not only did he do poster designs, he did all kinds of other mediums. Uh, he did uh, corporate logos, some very famous ones. Um, he did titles for films, which uh, if you've ever seen his title sequences, they're absolutely wonderful and um and, and again, he influenced so many people uh, from his works beginning in the 50s and 60s on until really the, the last uh, half of the century. Um, I think his, his influence is incredible. So. We'll go over Blow Up now. This is your selection. I think it's a beautiful. And the, these are from countries, Belgium, uh, France, uh, Polish, Italy, Czechoslovakia, Japan, Germany. Yeah, if you if you look at, I mean, it's an Italian film, so um, I would start looking at the the Italian designs. So we have three different Italian designs in that section. Right. And uh, the first one is a it's uh, an image of if you know the film, it's about a fashion photographer, and there's a murder mystery wrapped around the uh, sort of swinging 60s world. And um, it shows uh, David Hemmings uh, is uh, photographing um, Vanessa Redgrave, who's mm -hmm. lying on, on the ground. And it's just this uh, very stark image, red background, black and white image of the photographer on top of the model with the camera and photographing her. And... Um, it's just an incredibly iconic image that is hugely popular among poster collectors. And then there was a second design, which is more artistic in some regards, uh, was done by a, a designer named uh, Ercole Brini, who's a very significant Italian designer, which has a different take on the film, also an Italian poster. And... Uh, uh, Brini did tended to do his work in uh, watercolors, and it's this beautiful image of uh, the model in the foreground and the photographer in the background with shooting her. Uh, and then we have a uh, what's called a photo booster, which was an Italian lobby card, as they called them. And uh, there were ten or twelve different images uh, from the film in each of these, and they're also beautifully done. You see. Uh, Mr. Hemmings, uh, and then an, a second image of him with Vanessa Redgrave from the film. Uh, and then moving down to the, the uh, Belgian poster, which is, again, completely, completely different, real pop art uh, style of, uh, of work. I'm not sure who that designer is, but he did absolutely beautiful um, pop art, which, again, this is probably the swinging 60s movie so mm -hmm. of, of every movie that was uh, made about the swinging 60s blow up is probably the most known and and thought of to capture that whole time and place it in london um in the fashion world and uh this uh, belgian poster is absolutely crazy and uh then we have the uh uh, one of the Polish posters, which was uh, designed by uh, our friend uh, Shvergi again, which is uh, sort of a um, almost a, a Dali-esque image where uh, um, you have to find the image within the, uh, the dot patterns. Uh, and then we have uh, a, a French poster, which is similar to the uh, one that first Italian poster, but um, they do a it's in full color instead of black and white. And then you have this, um, these images inside the letters. Uh, and then we have a, uh, Czech poster, which again captures, I mean, just as an aside, Polish posters are very famous and, and very well known in the graphic design world. Czech posters for my money are in some regards, every bit is as good and as interesting and 
uh, but are a lot less known. Uh, I mean, in Poland, the uh, there are museums devoted to posters. Poland is considered the first country that took posters, not just movie posters, all posters, as an art form. And Czech posters, uh, are, again, are not as well represented uh, in the, uh, I think, in literature and so forth about design. But if you look at this Czech poster, it's just insane. It's just crazy. It's broken yeah, up. Yeah. And again, it, very, very similar to, it's got, you know, this sort of number one on it, which is almost looks like, if you know the designer, Robert Indiana, looks like right. one of his designs. And mm-hmm. then the finger pointing at you, is, it, you know, it's just out there. And, uh, you know, you have images from the film and then you have this layout of a stadium. I mean, you know, a, a seating <laughs> plan from a, yeah. you know, what is that? I mean, where did that right. come from? I, right. I have no idea. Last one that, that we're picturing is the German poster, which is again another another take on on that um, uh, the image that's on the Italian and the French posters, but beautifully rendered. What interests me is that um, is that also Japan. Uh, I throw in here a little bit um, the the country the concepts of the movies are not what you normally would think. Uh, I remember a night to remember is not the ship sinking. It's like blinker, the, 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 the blinker lights on a ship, right? Or the sword from the Japanese poster of, I think it's Pulp Fiction, where there's blood at the tip. You know, Sam? It's like the way they think is so creative, the concept, much more creative than a lot of the USA posters, I must say, you know, in a certain respect, right? Uh, without question, Spence. I mean, the... Uh, Japanese posters is another uh, particular favorite of mine. I, I love Japanese posters, that, and they're very different from almost every other country. Mm. Again, uh, I mean, France, Italy, uh, most of Europe does beautiful painterly uh, designs, by and mm. large. Mm. Uh, and, and the Polish and the, the Eastern European posters are also largely painted posters, uh, with the exception of the one behind me is not. Uh, the uh, um, but the uh, Japanese posters do a photo montage design lar- most of the time, and uh, they're absolutely not always, but but largely absolutely beautiful and yeah. and co- completely atypical of almost any other country. So now we'll, we'll get on to some of the posters that you picked that are beautiful, and we'll start off with Japan, eight and a half. Uh, well, that that is a, a, a case in point, Spence. Uh, it's yeah. just a, a stark image of um, the great Fellini film. Again, photo montage. It's got you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different, nine different uh, elements going on in this poster that um, are just, I, I think it's a, a riveting poster. It, you it know, is, plus it the, is. Um, with a big, big image, of course, of Marcello Mastriani, who's the mm. central figure in the film. But it's a great poster of the great Fellini film. Apocalypse Now, Japan. Eiko Ishioka. Uh, um, this, this is atypical for uh, uh, Japanese posters in, in that it is uh, painted. Uh, Eiko Ishioka was a great um, graphic designer. Uh, she worked in... Uh, largely fashion she only was involved with uh this and two other movie posters a second apocalypse now poster and another one for the film um koyana scotsi uh but um this is an incredible poster if if anybody who's looking at this image uh during the show should notice the surfer underneath the giant uh helicopters in the famous uh scene uh, when they right. uh, go yeah. go in under the uh, the Wagner with the Wagner music playing, <laughs> great image, great image, very powerful image. Uh, the Hourglass Sanatoria, Polish. Uh, so we're back to uh, Poland again, and uh, this poster is designed by uh, a gentleman, uh, s- sadly not with us anymore, named uh, Francesc uh, Starowiecki. Uh, when I first got exposed to Polish posters, the first designer that caught my eye, uh, as you can see, you can't really avoid it, is yeah. Starowiecki. And Starowiecki 
was known for the most surreal posters I have ever seen from anybody in the world. And mm. uh, this this is a famous uh, um, Polish film by a, a great uh, director named Wojciech Haas. And um, uh, you can just see how how crazy this poster is. And it, Starvisky liked skulls. So you'll uh. see a, lo a lot of skulls and a <laughs> lot of Starvisky posters. Uh, Army of Darkness, Japan. Um, so we're back to Japan. This is a, a extremely popular poster for the uh, terrific Sam Raimi uh, sequel to Evil Dead and uh, features my old friend Bruce Campbell uh, mm. uh, with the chainsaw and this very pop art imagery. Um, it it it's, looks like whoever designed this, it, it, it's an anonymous design, but whoever designed this, there's a, a very famous uh, Japanese graphic designer named uh, um, T Tenori Yoku, who mm. does uh, designs, not really movie posters, other other posters. Very, uh, he's in museum collections, and this is very uh, very similar to a lot of his designs. Au revoir les enfants is ah. uh, uh, this is a, a German poster, uh, East German poster. Um, the film is a film about uh, the Holocaust and um, is about uh, a Jewish boy who is who is taken by the Nazis. It's by the great French director, Louis Malle. Mm. And uh, I think it's just such a dynamic poster. Yeah. This is an example of East German poster design, which is also a lesser known uh, area of uh, poster design to many people. Uh, and they did a lot of similar to the other Eastern European uh, poster designs of, of very stylized and sometimes surreal as, as with this per, uh, poster. Yeah. Lake of Tears, Cuban. Olivia Art. Um, Olivia Art, yeah. Cu Sorry. Cuban posters. Uh, if uh, anybody has ever seen a Cuban poster up close, they're totally incredible. I mean, this is a, a beautiful example of their design. They were all silk screened. They're done. Um, the, the paper, if you lift a Cuban poster, it's just heavy and you can mm. smell the ink. Because wow. they were all, they're all screen printed, and uh, they're extremely extremely hard to find, but they're absolutely beautiful. Playtime French Rene Ferracci. Rene Ferracci. Uh, Playtime is the great film by the uh, the master uh, uh, filmmaker comedian uh, Jacques Tati. If anybody has not seen Jacques Tati posters, including Playtime, this is a masterpiece film about uh it's about the modern world about dehumanization and, and it's a comedy but it's a very very subtle tongue-in-cheek comedy uh and i think this poster is absolutely beautiful it captures the film very well just about yes. uh, about about the industrial world and how it can dehumanize us uh the next film Ro the famous roma kolesky film rosemary's baby uh walkuski i think we looked at the uh the caravaggio earlier um, from the indie book and uh, Rosemary's Baby, of course, the great Polanski film. Um, and this is another crazy, surreal, out there Polish poster. The ending is one of my favorite posters, as you well know, Sam. The birds, Polish, Branislaw is select. It's such a dark, I love it, black and white, dark poster. You know what I mean? It's one of my favorites as well, uh, Spence. I mean, I love uh, Hitchcock films. And it's such a crazy, crazy poster. <laughs> and uh, Zelik did not do a lot of uh, posters, but all his posters have a similar style, very stark and beautiful. And, and uh, uh, another thing I've, I've really come to be a big fan of through my education in graphic design, through movie posters, because I had no training in graphic design whatsoever, uh, is uh, typography. And this is a great example of typography as a design element. Now that we sort of went into these two books, let's talk about the design of these books, which Judith Salavis, my partner, the glue in my life, uh, did such a beautiful job with you, Sam, uh, overall. And uh, it, the design of the book is so beautiful when you open it up. I mean, she took a different... Uh, I could show you like 
something like this, you see, where she took segments of posters and integrated it with a typographical page. Judith, you want to talk about this? Well, it, it's... I'm going to say that there's... Uh, yeah, there... Um, there's not much I can say other than the, that I was... Well, Sam did an amazing job of photographing all the posters that are in the book. I was I was just just so struck by the beauty of, you know, one poster being more beautiful than the other, more interesting, more, um, you know, design elements, you know, that were happy and sad and 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 uh, it, it was just it's just, it was just amazing to me. So. It was a part of my creative process was just, you know, the visuals, what what stood out for me. I thought, well, I'm going to I'm going to like, you know, move my eyes deeply into the poster and 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 imagine myself being deeply within the poster, with, surrounded by the images and just, you know, cut pieces of it out. And that's yeah. what I used as, you know, designs within Ava, the book. Patrick, can you bring me up here on my picture? Oh, uh, yeah. This is another spread, which is very beautiful. So it's like... I also, I also did that on for the end papers. Yes. Which, um, you know, I always find in a book that the end papers are so boring and blasé, and I wanted this to be exciting. You know, I wanted to, you know, give the viewer because this is a visual they are all visually driven books give them as much things to look at as possible here are some pictures of the end papers uh, yeah and so those are like we we like you know really blue parts of posters up you know like 500 percent yeah so like to that and use them as you know Judith, Judith would always put that 120% in a book design, so the end papers would always be part of her design, which a lot of designers never do. They just leave it white, you know. Uh, Judith would always put the whole thing together, so it's kind of like a unified design. The entire well, it's like book. giving the purchaser, the person buying the book, a little extra gift. You did an absolutely amazing job, Judith, on, on both books. They're really, it just, it framed the posters in such a beautiful way, really. Yeah, and also the art, let's go into the art of the modern movie poster book, which is a huge book. Judith, there was so many plays here with poster sizes. And what I liked also, Judith, what you did is you did the credits in that Salovitz gray, I call it. You didn't do the <laughs> black, 100% black. And I think that adds to it because then the pictures come out and you see the credits, but it's a lighter it's lighter. It doesn't fight with the picture. Yeah, it was, it's a, um, that's something that I, you know, always felt um, when I when I read a, a visually driven book with black, 100% black type, it would always bother me that the type was just, you know, sort of bothering my eyes more. I was looking at the type and the, and the copy more than than the visual and, and when, when the book was really about the visual. So I, you know, wanted, didn't want that to happen with our book. So I, I always bring down the color of the copy, the type a little bit. So it's not blatantly in your eye, in your face. So it's a, you know, it's an 80% black or 75%, 80% black. So it's a little milder in color. It's a gray. It's you hard see, to see that way. Uh, yeah, it is hard to see that way. Spence, it's but. difficult, but it is at least. I mean, it's readable, but it's not blaringly in your face. Black. Yeah, and I, th I think that's so important, especially with a huge book like this. Also, uh, Judith has done this with other books. Uh, she designed uh, all our. This book was so much fun to do, and it took us a long time. I think yeah. we worked on it for about a year. You 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 uh, went back and forth with Sam a lot and David. Yeah, that was a, that's that's fifteen hundred posters. It was a big book. It is a big yeah. book. <laughs> it weighs eight eight pounds. So <laughs> yeah, that, that much I know. So yeah, it, it's and and the posters that you provided us with, uh, Sam, they were just so beautiful. It was also your editing because pretty much you did edit 
you know, it was we were I we worked with what you gave us. Yeah, it was it was fun to to curate the selection. You know, it's it's yeah. something I, I've been doing for a long time. Even back in 2010, I had been doing it for quite some time. And it, it's a, been a passion of mine personally. I started out as a collector and uh, found my way into being a, a, a business person doing it. But I'm still a collector at heart. And love these things. And I want to I want to put in kudos to David Kerr, who we really haven't talked about uh, that Sam brought into the book, both books, which was incredible text matter, you know, in both the books. I mean, the book couldn't have happened without his wonderful text matter. No, well, um, he's he's an incredibly talented, uh, very recognized uh, film critic and uh, film writer, not just a critic, mm -hmm. but um, if anybody's ever read Dave's. Uh, work on paper if if not you should i'm sure it's all archived out there somewhere and i know dave's put out some books some collections of his criticism but mm -hmm. he's an, an incredibly great uh writer and um moma is lucky to have him so how do people get in touch with you sam get, tell us a connection with you so if people want to see a gallery and get in touch well, with you the the website is is uh, very simple www.posteritati.com and uh, I'm sure that the the spelling will be in there somewhere. Our gallery is on center between Broom and Grand. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from eleven to seven, and um, uh, we can you can email me at sam at posteritati.com and uh, happy to. Uh, meet anybody we get we get people in from i've had people come to uh postratati directly from the airport from places like chile and wow. it just it blows my mind and they've just mm -hmm. you know we we've been doing this for uh, almost 27 years now and um which also blows my mind uh, since it was not <laughs> something i i ever intended to be doing when i went to film school and worked in film and uh but it's so much fun. And, you know, working with the two of you has just been fabulous. And hopefully we can do another one. one of these yeah, we're, we're like a movie poster family here. On that note, if I may go back to something you had that Sam, you had talked, you had mentioned in passing. I don't know if you even realize it, but you had said something about lobby cards. And so that, you know, I don't think... A, I don't think everybody knows what a lobby card is. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit, but that would be a book right there. Yeah. Lobby cards would be a book. Well, lobby cards were uh, made in different countries and they had different scenes from the film. And, and uh, we showed the blow up one, which uh, was a, uh, a Italian, uh, what's called, they, in Italy, they call them photo boosters but they're lobby cards. America did lobby cards. Many countries did them with different, they would have sets of eight to 10 to 12 different scenes from the film with mm. graphic elements to them. Uh, and they're really fun to collect. I actually personally have a large lobby card, American lobby card collection. Oh, mm. so, uh, I, I wanted to say that when I first went down to your place, it was years ago, you had a file drawers of these posters. I opened them up and I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, these are the actual posters. They're beautiful. I mean, Humphrey Bogart movies, whatever. It was just wonderful to see before my eyes these printed posters in front of me, you know? Well, I think, I, I mean, post, I'm, I touched upon the fact that Poland has museums devoted to posters. And uh, they're at the forefront of, of recognizing that posters are an art form. And again, not just movie posters. There are posters for everything from mm. obviously entertainment area, which includes movies or music or uh, theater, but um, politics and, and just about everything has been represented in posters. And usually the poster has to be designed by a, a graphic designer like Judith and um, there can be all kinds of wonderful, wonderful design work done in posters for well over a century. I mean, some of the earliest famous posters were designed by Toulouse-Lautrec in the late 1800s. And um, I, I think it's becoming more known throughout the world 
uh, just how important posters are from a graphic design standpoint. And there actually is a, a fairly new institution in New York City called Poster House, which is mm. the first uh, poster museum in the United States. Wow. And it's on 23rd and 6th. It's a fabulous uh nonprofit institution that everybody should check out if they're interested in posters and or graphic design. I want to tell you a little story that uh, I met uh, Pedro Almodovar was in New York and he was doing a book signing at Tasha and I went down with our independent book and I had a feeling he never saw the book and I, I it was a long line and I got in front thank God and I went up to see him and I gave him the book and he like flipped he opened up the book and he said he brought everybody around him he said you got to come over here and see the book literally saying that these people around him and he's going through the pages and right away he says give spencer my private phone number you know, he goes, <laughs> and he was so i i never forgot that and we just became hooked up after that you know we've been emailing each other once in a while um and jim jarmusch is the other one that i met and gave him the book, and he loved it. I mean, he really loved the book. Uh, but there's many, many directors that have our books, uh, filmed their famous people. And uh, uh, like I said, this is... Uh, and thanks for being on, Sam. Uh, this show well, is Well, I mean, j j just the one thing to interject, Spence, because yeah. we, we have a lot of film industry people who are our customers over many, many years. Right, and, right. And, and they've told us stories about how they battle to get good posters. It's kind of like wow. a micro, it's kind of like a microcosm of the filmmaking process oh, wow. that, that the, the powers that be within the, the producers or the distributors will typically want to do a very blah poster with a big headshot of the star, <laughs> right. you know, and we, we call it, we call that the curse of the floating head. <laughs> so, uh, where, where, where you'll have to, Tom Cruise's head or somebody, whatever. Yeah. And, um, uh, that they they love uh, obviously they love film but they also love posters because it's an it's an extension of what they're doing and some some of them get involved with the design including Almodovar he's, mm -hmm. he's very famous for having control over his poster designs mm -hmm. and and, some, yeah. so, and I I would assume that uh, Jim Jarvis does as well because yeah. his poster designs are terrific so. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jarmusch is very visual, you know, he's... Uh, no, of course. And you know that, I mean, he, he gets into rock. Uh, Bob Gruen's a very close friend of his, and he's, he knows us. But I got to tell you that um, I think you brought up a very good point. I think the indie book is maybe more expressive of create. Well, the other countries in our big book are big time. But in the indie book, I think when you're in indie film, you have that control, Right. You have the control of the poster, I think, more in the indie film, right? Yeah, no, no question. Because you know why? Because there's not as much money at stake. So the, yeah. it's again, it's a microcosm of the film. So the the filmmakers are much more in control of indie films because they're smaller and they're right. not, they're not involved with you know they're not in, like having focus groups deciding this that and the other thing whether it's the yeah. poster or, or elements of the film, so they can be more creative. And that's that's why that was such a fun book to do, because yeah. there, there's so much creativity in that in that whole area. Well, Sam, I can't thank you enough. You're part of our family. We're part of your family. And, uh, and uh, looking forward uh, to seeing you again and maybe on the show, and maybe we'll do a book together again, hopefully. You know? Yeah, well, let's, let's do a rock book or a uh, or a lobby card book or a oh. Japanese poster book <laughs> or who knows <laughs>